1997. And you know, when you come here to Notre Dame and you hear the fight song, maybe the most famous fight song in college sports, you feel the history, the tradition, and indeed, wake up the echoes. Of course, both teams opened up with season victories, and they did it in impressive fashion, taking advantage of opportunistic defenses. Both teams with legitimate Heisman hopefuls, Lorenzo White and Tim Brown. We have a Heisman hopeful, of course. My partner, alongside Kevin Fowley, he's hoping he gets a Heisman ballot and just gets to vote. When you talk about Lorenzo White, he has rushed for over 100 yards each of the last two times he's met Notre Dame. Well, Lorenzo's a given, I believe, but McAllister, the quarterback, is the key to the offense for Michigan State. Whether or not he gets outside the contain of Notre Dame is really what Michigan State needs to do. He'll open up the entire offense for State if he gets outside. So Notre Dame's defense, kind of a blue-collar defense. They bring their lunch bail. They give you a day's work. What they must do is contain McAllister. If they do that, they'll shorten up that offense, and I believe they'll have a heck of a chance. Speaking of a test, how about the test facing the Michigan State defense trying to stop number 81, Tim Brown? He's a thoroughbred. Well, Brown, too, a Heisman Trophy candidate. The difference between he and White is you can hand White the ball. You have to throw it to Tim Brown, and that puts the burden squarely on the shoulders of Andrzak, the quarterback for Notre Dame. He's going to have to not make mistakes and get the ball to Tim Brown. If he doesn't get it to Brown, the rest of the offense will have to take up the slack, and that's going to be a big job because the defense of Michigan State, a 4-3 stunt defense, is very tough to run on. Frankly, you do not run on the Spartan defense. Notre Dame will not run on that defense today. The short passing game, the key for the Irish, Andrzak has got to be in control. All right, partner, let's kick it off. It's a great matchup. Michigan State taking on Notre Dame. And this live ESPN CFA presentation brought to you by State's Lorenzo White. And Notre Dame's Tim Brown. Besides the natural talent and God-given ability, both have the intangibles, the heart, and the desire it takes to even be considered for such an honor. Their quest to be the best continues tonight. There he is, 53 years of age, in his fifth year at Michigan State, the head coach, George Perlis. Prior to arriving in Michigan State, of course, the defensive coordinator for 10 years with the Pittsburgh Steelers, assistant coach for three of those years under Chuck Knoll in Pittsburgh. He played and coached under Duffy Doherty at Michigan State. He was a sophomore tackle until a knee injury ended his career. George Perlis takes his Spartans with a record of 1-0 into the den here at Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish. And, of course, their head coach, Lou Holtz, starting his second season at the helm of this famous university. Five and six in his first year. Before that, two years at Minnesota, seven years at Arkansas, four years at North Carolina State, and three years at William & Mary. Out of East Liverpool, Ohio, Lou Holtz. Think he's not nervous? There they are, the Irish. And they have won the toss, and they have decided to kick off. So it's the Spartans and the Irish. Game two, Michigan State won on Labor Day 12 days ago as they surprised USC, taking advantage of five Trojan mistakes, putting 17 points on the board as a result of those five Trojan turnovers. Michigan State 27, USC 13. And, of course, Notre Dame. There were seven Michigan mistakes, and that accounted for 23 of the 26 points that Notre Dame put on the board. The kicking game will be very big in this game, Jim, because of Brown, the great kick returner, and also Greg Montgomery, the leading punter in the nation for Michigan State. The kid kicks him a long way. He's got an 85-yarder to his credit, so we'll be watching the kicking game all night. The famous uniforms of Notre Dame. And we're just about set to get it underway. A terrific doubleheader here on ESPN. In game one, Mike Patrick and Lee Corso, of course, Texas A&M, Jackie Sherrill getting things on track at College Station, Texas. And they surprised Don James and his Huskies. And now tonight, the second half of our twin bill. There is the kicker, Ted Brattle, out of Sylvania, Ohio, 5'9", 165. Good range and back deep. There is Johnson, Craig Johnson, number 28. And Blake Ezor is number 26 in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. The 72nd consecutive sellout, a rivalry that goes way back to 1897, the 53rd renewal. Notre Dame leads the series, 33 wins, 18 losses, and of course, that most famous tie. At the one-yard line, 
and he goes down one yard deep. Blake Ezor, a safety. He caught it one on the one yard line. He took two steps backward and went down on one knee. Possession was in the field of play, took a step back, put his knee down. Ezor back up tailback. A little shy on experience. Great runner. But he's here in South Bend, and in South Bend, things happen like this. A lot of pressure playing here. Out of Las Vegas, the young sophomore. Now, he shares the responsibility with Craig Johnson, who was standing at the five-yard line. Johnson has to help him out and let him know where he's standing. I agree, but I don't think that Johnson would ever expect that to happen. I think that he needs to know where he is, but Ezor, I think he just, the, the crowd got to him. I just think the crowd got to him. A guy who returns kicks should know better. So very quickly, with no time elapsed on the clock, as George Perlis talks to Craig Johnson on the sideline, the Irish have struck and have a 2 0 lead. Well, it's tough enough to play here, Jim, but for something like that to have you give up your first possession, the coin toss, of course, Notre Dame giving you the ball, now you have to give it right back without ever having your offense go on the field and you're giving up two points. Again, no, this is the Fighting Irish. I'm a little bit nervous being here. I can imagine Michigan State, they must be pretty nervous too. These are just a sophomore. Well, I'll tell you, I still, I've, I've got to disagree with you. I really think that Johnson could have helped him out by saying you're you're between the one and the two-yard line. You've got to give him some, he's watching the ball, Ezor. Well, I don't disagree with you, but I think the ultimate responsibility goes to Ezor and where he is. He needs to know where he is also. So now, of course, the free kick. There is number 81, Tim Brown. Averages 25 yards each kickoff return. And the free kick. Greg Montgomery averages over 53. It slithers off his foot, and the Irish have the ball at the 46-yard line. Let's look at that Notre Dame offense. Andrew Zek played very well last week. He'll get another test this week against State. And, of course, Mark Green is the workmanlike running back. We'll see a lot of running backs in the backfield for Notre Dame. Andy Heck is solid. Tim Brown, the Heisman Trophy candidate, a great player, lightning fast. Offensive line, Raider, Spruell may be the best on that offensive line. He's a co-captain. The other co-captain, Chuck Lanza, super center. Pearson, a sophomore, coming up fast. Do it with five left. Brown at the top of the screen, one and right. Andrew Zach to look into the eyes of his helmet. Second man through, that's Mark Green, number 24 from Riverside, California. Let's check the Spartans defensively. 4-3 stunt, Mark Nichols may be the best. He's the tackle, the best of the front four, but also watch John Buddy. Great pass rusher, a little on the small side. And linebacker, Percy Snow, young, but a very talented kid. Tim Moore may be the best of that. Derek Green from SMU is one corner, and the safeties were corners last year. They're now playing safe. Irish in possession, second down and seven. The backs for L. Well, that time Reggie Ward lined up in the slot along with Tim Brown. Mark Nichols, 83, the senior out of Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, on the stop for the Michigan State Spartans. Two plays for Michigan State, two mistakes. The safety and then the bad punt by Montgomery just slithered off his foot. So a little nervous coming in here to South Bend. Absolutely. I, I don't think that it would be proper if you weren't nervous coming into South Bend. They have that defensive unit on the field, and that's the strength of their team, the defensive line. Ash Mark far side on third and six. Dumas, outside, Brown inside in the slot. First pass, Terry Anderson. Loose football. Big pile up at the 48. Mark Green, I believe, number 24, fell on the ball. Percy Snow, the sophomore, number 48 out of Canton, Ohio, forced that fumble. So the Spartan defense comes crashing through to halt the fighting Irish. This is what we talked about. Now, Perlis brought this defensive set directly from the Pittsburgh Steelers. No other college in the country plays it as well. Watch the right of your screen. Tremendous blow. Could have torn his throwing arm right out of the socket. Percy Snow, a great middle linebacker coming from the outside. Vince Phelan is the punter. Todd Crum, number 35, back deep for the Spartans, waiting at the 10. It is high. It is wobbly. It will hit outside the 20. In pursuit, inside, and will roll out of bounds down at the 15-yard line. So the Spartans' offense finally takes the field after a 36-yard punt. 
McAllister, only quarterback on the roster to have taken a snap prior to this season. Running back, of course, Lorenzo White, Heisman Trophy candidate. They'll give him, they'll give him the ball 30 times in this game. Sergeant, good tight end. Watch out for Rice, and he's an excellent receiver. Got great quickness. Mandarich, probably the leading tackle on the team. Very big. Lots of size. Shermer, great center. The rest of these guys are strong. Good offensive line in front of White. Out in the bottom left side of your screen, Andre Rice is deployed wide right. Flanker is Willie Boyer, 17. Bobby McAllister on the sprint out. Dives up near the 27-yard line. Ned Bolkar bumped him out the inside linebacker. Speaking of the Irish defense, they're front. The front may be a little suspect. They're looking for a big game from these guys. Kunz is the best of the bunch. Linebackers, Figaro, an All-American candidate. Flash, Darrell Gordon, a blitz and cover guy. A lot of athletes there. Bolkar had a big game last week against Michigan. They'll need another one today. Spence is a backup. Spagala is a guy who they may, thought maybe would not play here. South Hall had two interceptions last week. Boyer in motion. McAllister rolls the other way. First down at the 35-yard line. Willie Boyer. A pickup of nine and the first first down of the football game. Jeff Koontz with pressure. One of the keys to this game, you got to pull this guy up, McAllister. Notre Dame there, but they don't get him. This is what will happen. Coverage has got to break down when you don't trap the quarterback. If they let him go from sideline to sideline, it's going to be a long night for the Notre Dame defense. Just outside the 35, first and 10 for the Spartans. Inside of 12 minutes in the first quarter. Michigan State well behind, 2-0. Cracking over the left, blocking by Kula goes James Moore, number 33, the fullback out of Lansing, Michigan, redshirted back in 85, and Ned Bolkar, number 47, the junior from Phillipsburg, New Jersey, made the stop. Tackle by Jeff Coons, number 8, second down. Three tackles for Bolkar so far. There's what James Moore did a year ago. The ball approaching the 40-yard line as Rison goes wide left, Boyer comes wide right. dances and spins across the 40 up near the 42 yard line now he came in with 3,165 yards so he has just passed Ollie Matson, San Francisco on the all-time NCAA yardage list the thing that makes Lorenzo so tough with his cutback ability is a sprint out draw they get the defense going in one direction and then you got this guy who's healthy this year with the good ankles instead of the bad ones making the great cuts third and four can run, looks for somebody to come back and gets hammered out of bounds at the 39. Wes Pritchett, number 34, the senior out of Atlanta, Georgia, 6'5", 234, crashes McAllister out, a loss of three. Lorenzo White was wide open on the other side of the field. McAllister had pulled up and thrown it to him. Now, I believe that Michigan State will set up Notre Dame later in the game. He'll come to the sideline, stop, and throw it back. So look for White. He was wide open on that play. Greg Montgomery played 10 games for Penn State back in 83. Led the nation in punting, and there is Tim Brown. Averages 18 yards every punt return. Montgomery, a rainmaker. Brown at the eight. Back to the 14-yard line. A 53-yard punt, a six-yard return. First and ten, the Irish with 10.27 left to go in the first quarter. Notre Dame leads 2-0. And is being brought to you by, along with Kevin Kiley, I'm Jim Kelly. The ball at the 14-yard line of the Irish. They have 14 yards total offense in the football game, all on the ground. Brown and Dumas slotted out wide to the right. Baxter Taylor, 46, Green, 24. Andrasak sprints out, dives to the 20. Picks up six at second down and four in the grasp of Mark Nichols. Well, the thing that makes Notre Dame tough on offense is that they will run a number of sets, multiple sets. They'll run wishbone, they'll run single back, eye back, and they do it with the same personnel. A lot of teams will do it, but they use specialty personnel. They'll tip what they're doing. Notre Dame uses the same personnel for all their sets. Makes it tough to read defensively. Timmy Brown gets a rest. Alonzo Jefferson, number 13, checks in. Wide receiver, Dumas, wide to the right. Back. Jeff 
Jefferson chopped down behind the line of scrimmage. That swarming Spartan defense led by number 87, John Buddy. Buddy, the junior out of Kansas City, 6'4", 241, five sacks a year ago. Of course, his father, Ed Buddy, played with the Kansas City Chiefs and his brother Brad with USC and then the Chiefs awesome. later. John is awesome small, but he's very quick. He's good in this defense because it's a stunning defense. He doesn't have to take on linemen by himself very often, so you can be a little small as long as you have that quickness. Tim Brown checks back in. He's wide right. Number 82 wide left on third and five. Andersek wants it all. Looks for Brown. He's got him. Made his move inside of Todd Crum. First down, Notre Dame. This has got to send a shiver up George Perlitz back. Double coverage. Watch, they've got him short, but he comes a little bit in motion. Short man's got him. He lets him go. A little shot misses him, and now the deep man has to cover him, but the pass is right on, right in front of the zone. That was double coverage. Brown and Andrzejczyk able to beat Todd Crum on that play. The first first down for the Irish. They line up in the eye pro set with Johnson and Green. Green on a dive, blocking up front by Chuck Lenza and Jeff Pearson. Mark Nichols on the stop again. Three tackles. He is 6'2", 252. He bench presses 500 pounds. Talk about value to a team. Brown, if he draws double coverage, he'll open up that running game a little bit. He'll open up the other receivers. Whether or not he catches the ball is really immaterial. Depends on how many people they have to commit to stopping him. Timmy Brown checks out. Aaron Robb, the junior, out of Idaho. 21 checks back in. He's wide left. They got the reverse almost set up. They'll show you that a little later. That's at the 39-yard line. John Miller out of Framingham Hills, Michigan, submarined him and went down low. Third and nine. Tim Brown checks back in and George Perlin paces the sideline. A mistake early cost his Spartans two points. 7:44 and counting left in quarter number one. Lou Holt stalks the sidelines for Notre Dame. Brown, Dumas, wide right. Irish were one of two on third down conversions. Wide open out of the backfield is Green. First down inside the Spartans 48. 13 yards for the junior out of Riverside, California. He worked over the freshman Lanier Payton. Notre Dame went trips right, and they sent the inside guy the slot, number 24, left corner of your screen. They sent him across on an under pattern. The coverage on the other side was double to Brown, left him wide open. First down, again, Brown helping in the pass in the secondary to take, uh, to take the secondary away from Green. At the bottom of your screen, number 81, Tim Brown. Wide to the right, Ricky Waters. Waters, close to the 40 of Michigan State. Mark Nichols on the stop again. The defensive tackle has had a busy evening. Notre Dame running into the boundary towards Brown. He had a crackback block. Helped him run the ball for eight yards on first down again. I'll tell you something about Mark Nichols. He came to Michigan State as a 218-pound freshman. He weighs about 265 right now. 83 in the middle of things defensively. Second and two. Terrell and Jefferson slotted wide right. Johnson, the fullback. Penalty flag down, and the Spartans jumped off. Travis Davis, the sophomore out of Warren, Ohio, number 75. That should never happen, especially the nose guard. You go on movement, the nose guard is looking at the ball. They teach you day in and day out in practice, don't move until you see offensive movement, certainly the ball. And he was right over the ball. He went off sides anyway, Travis Davis. Mistakes early by Michigan State. Andrzejczyk, two for two, 32 yards. Dumas, Jefferson, wide right, top of your screen. Johnson and Waters are the running backs. Andrzejczyk and Anthony Johnson collide. Travis Davis clogged things up in the middle, number 75. Tim Moore lowered the boom on Andrzejczyk here. Now you're taught on the corner. As soon as the quarterback takes a step, you come. Number 42, Moore does a face job. 
on Terry Andrzak. Now, that will stay in his mind as he comes to the corner later on. Might cause him to pull up a little early. Nothing doing for Anthony Johnson. The blocking broke down. John Buddy clogged the middle, number 87, helped out by Travis Davis, number 75. He was named the defensive MVP of the spring game, Travis was. His cousin, Nate Rogers, plays Big Ten football for Michigan. Third and ten. Tim Brown and Pantera wide to the right. And Rizak unloads. He's got Timmy Brown. Brown breaks it inside the 12. Derek Reed stopped the touchdown. A 22-yard pickup. You saw the breakaway speed of that man, number 81, Tim Brown. Play action should never work third and long against this team. Again, you've got trips. Brown underneath. Safety trying to cover him. Doesn't get there. Now you see why he's a Heisman Trophy candidate. He knows instinctively to go inside slip the tackle, and then go outside. Andrzak gets credit for getting them the ball, but Michigan State has got to be closer to, to Tim Brown than that. Two catches for Brown, 41 yards. Peck and Jacobs are in there now, double tight for the Irish. Dive play over the right Anthony side, Johnson. blocking by Pearson and Spruell. That's Anthony Johnson out of South Bend. Mark Nichols on the stop once again, helped out by Percy Snow. Defensive coordinator for the Spartans, Nick Saban, was concerned when Notre Dame got in close, they go to two tight ends and just try to pound it out. He felt they could get three yards on every down. And, of course, that would require a fourth down, uh, a third and one. But he felt that Notre Dame was quite capable of getting it in from this close on the ground. He didn't think they could run against him in the middle of the field. Line of scrimmage, the 11-yard line, and the Irish a bit confused on second and eight. So, with 4.28 left to go in the first quarter and the Irish driving, let's take time out. An excitement all its own. Welcome back to South Bend. The Irish leading 2 0. They're driving. They've got the ball at the Spartan 11 yard line. Second down and eight. In the middle of things, number 75. That is Travis Davis, the sophomore from Warren, Ohio. You know, he wears the same number as Mean Joe Green, and that's the way that Spartan defense is designed. George Perlis, defensive coordinator for 10 years for the Steelers. And, and he brought Steve Furness with him, who played on that defensive line for the Steelers as his defensive line coach. So one's got Mean Joe's number, the other guy's the coach. Well, you know why they brought Steve. They couldn't afford Joe Green. <laughs> That's right. Well, they had to bring somebody from the Steelers that understood the orchestration of that Pittsburgh defensive at 4-3. The slant defense, second and eight. And was out. What a collision at the seven-yard line. Frank Jacobs, the tight end, the freshman from Highland Heights, Kentucky. Well, you know that uh, Michigan State's going to come after Notre Dame on second and long near the goal line. They did. Andrzak did a nice job. They didn't pick up much yardage. Jacobs with a good catch. And they're saying an incompleted pass. So the ball spotted back at the 11 where it stays third and eight. Harlan Barnett put the collision on Jacobs who could not hang on. Wide to the left. Dumas. In the slot, Tim Brown commanding double coverage. sack man open Tim Brown too far he was open he had three yards on number 44 John Miller now remember John Miller was a corner last year the fact that he's now playing safety does not say that George Perlis had confidence in his man coverage he was stuck on Brown right there in man coverage and didn't do the job and it was Miller earlier that uh, that Brown beat on an earlier pattern so they are getting to isolate him on the corner here you go this is a former corner now playing safety bumps him but he lets him go Andrews a little shorter they've got a TD a 28 yard field goal try for Ted Gradle whose granddad and father both graduated from Notre Dame it's on its way and it's good It's been all Notre Dame in the first quarter. 4.08 left to go. A safety and a field goal. The Irish lead by five. They only came up with three points as the Spartan defense stiffened. And Ted Rottle, who has a 3.5 grade average as an English and economics major, 
working on his MBA degree this fall put it through the uprights for a 5 nothing Spartan deficit Irish on top and a little nervous still you're right Jim and they should be they got two big breaks early and they have yet to score a touchdown they've got five points which I'm sure in fact five points is the uh, the margin of the last two Michigan State victories was five points. Rottle, hash mark far side Ezor is back at the five he of course knelt down in the end zone after catching the ball at the one and a half yard line he'll get another chance this time from the four hurls across the 22 First and ten for the Spartans, an 18-yard return. So Bobby McAllister, the junior from Pompano Beach, Florida. There he is, 6'3", 190 pounds, best game in 85 against Iowa. He can throw the ball 70 yards in the air. I remind you, Terry Bradshaw, as we talk about ex-Steelers, doesn't he? Sure, George wouldn't mind having Terry Bradshaw sit on the bench to back his kid up. Wide, wide to the right, Andre Rice. White and Q in the backfield for the Spartans. White, of course, number 34, the tailback. Sprint out, McAllister. Rison at the 36. A 15-yard pickup, a Michigan State first down. Marv Spence, the senior out of Chester, PA. Number 25 on the coverage, but Rison, Rison rather, has got the good moves, the good hands, and the great concentration. He kept one foot in bounds. Pritchett, the senior out of Atlanta, number 34, the middle linebacker on the stop. Cedric Figaro stayed at home and forced the play back inside. And the reason that play worked was the early penetration by Notre Dame. They made Off White commit yard. right away, and the rest of the defense was able to chase him. He had no choice but to go outside immediately. Irish were there. Pritchett, number 34, the coaches say, a little reckless, a lot aggressive. Find himself in the middle of big plays. Good blitz. gets dumped, fights back to the 29. Notre Dame's defense just teeing off. Tom Gorman comes crashing through, 6'6", 260. There he is out of Evergreen Park, Illinois. They teach you on the defensive line to follow the pull. If a guard pulls, see him, number 87, Gorman, middle of your screen, the guard pull. He came right after the quarterback, and that's the result. Anytime a guy pulls, you check and go. He did it to perfection. Coaches will tell you of Gorman that he is faster and hits harder than anybody in the Notre Dame defensive front. Third and 16. Bryson and Wilson slotted out. McAllister needs 16. Incomplete. Throws it over by the Notre Dame bench. A punting situation again. It's been all Notre Dame. 2.32 left to go. McAllister can't get on track. We talked about the uh, the Spartan defensive line, but it's been the Notre Dame defensive line right then in that series that have controlled the ball game. Big, big series for the Notre Dame defense. They stopped White and McAllister from getting outside, and that's what they need to do. There is Greg Montgomery. Had an 86-yard punt last year, a Michigan State record. This one a little bit wobbly. Tim Brown at the 30. Tim Brown, one man to beat, he's gone. Tim Brown. They had him to start 
Williams had him bottled up. I want to tell you, this was a 10-man line. He had very little blocking on this. Three guys get back, but watch the acceleration to the right of your screen. Watch Brown right there. Boom, he's gone. And Rod West for Notre Dame, number 43. Look at this block. Look how he stays with it. Brown just outruns it. 2.14 left to go. The Irish big. They lead by 12. And welcome back to Notre Dame. The Irish leading 12-0 over the Spartans. A mistake-filled first period for George Perlis' crew. They came in after that impressive win against USC. Some felt they were a little lucky against the Trojans. There is Tim Brown getting a good look by the Giants general manager, George Young, who's in attendance here. Of course, he likes George Young, does Notre Dame youngsters. Drafted Mark Navarro a couple of years ago. Blake Esau at the four. Chopped down at the 23. Well, we have a doubleheader today and another one for you next week, 30 Eastern time. Another long day for Tim Brando in the studio and all of his support crew. Scores and highlights throughout the day right here on ESPN. Boyer in motion, McAllister, so Lorenzo White, he goes the other way. Stutter steps, chopped down at the 23. Jeff Koontz. One thing you can say about Notre Dame's defense is they are well coached and they will stay in position. Watch Rod West again, number 43 on the backside. Number 34, Lorenzo White on the cutback. There's 43. See, he doesn't make the tackle, but he turns White in. The rest of the defense closes in. That's what you have to do against the great runners. They do it against Dorsett. He just box him in. Second and nine. Rice is wide left. White dives to the 25. Blocking on that left side by Bob Kula and Pat Schirmer. Mike Griffin, the nose tackle, number 94, out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. The seniors, 6'4", 246. A broken ankle most of last year. Made a good recovery, and he starts for Lou Holtz. If I'm playing defense right now, I would, I would expect the Spartans to be conservative and maybe roll McAllister one way or the other, not go to the drop back. So I'd be looking for a wide play here. Maybe a screen to draw, quarterback one. One thing you'd like to do if you're Michigan State is put a first down, keep your defense. They've been out almost the entire first quarter. Slot to the right. Rice and outside. McAllister chopped down at the 13. Jeff Koontz again. He was an all-state pick in Florida, number 93. That's why I wouldn't do a drop back. I want you to watch McAllister. He's very slow getting back, and look how deep he drops. He doesn't step up. The defensive rush is able to get him. He is not a drop back quarterback, and in a predictable situation, I would send him out, let him roll, try to get away from the defense. Mike Griffin, 94, is the injured Irishman down. He was right in the middle of that pileup, the nose tackle. Well, how about Syracuse? They were leading. Vanderbilt up by three against Duke. That's in the second. 3-0, the Gophers of John Gutekunst on top over the Golden Bears. you got the Golden Gophers and the Golden Bears. Army over Kansas State by a field goal. Eastern Michigan, same margin against Jerry Faust at Akron. Boston U up by four over New Hampshire. 34 seconds left to go in this first quarter. There is Montgomery. We mentioned he had an 86-yard punt last year. He'll need all of that to get the Irish bad field position. And the danger with Montgomery and Brown in the same game is that Montgomery can kick at 80 yards. He'll outkick his coverage, and you don't want to give this guy a 20-yard cushion when he's running the ball back. So he almost has to let up a little bit. There he is, Tim Brown. He broke the last one 70 yards for the only touchdown in the game. Irish are coming. Montgomery hangs it high. He backs Brown up to the 34. One man to beat again. Yards, 
since the last one went 70. He scored touchdowns the last two times he's touched the ball. That's exactly what happened. A, a bad missed tackle there. This guy is so quick he runs through tackles. Out kicked his coverage, Montgomery did. No chance there to catch the, well, the Heisman. Heisman hopeful. He's got a leg up here. It started with a safety. The Irish added a field goal, and then Tim Brown, 70 and 66 yards, and the Irish annihilating Michigan State with 13 seconds left in the first quarter, 19 to nothing. There's Montgomery, the punter. Well, he should never be the last guy. He's out of his shoes. Brown just leaves him on the ground and goes in. If the punter's the last guy to get you, you've already beaten him. Well, we talked about that most famous fight song, Waking Up the Echoes, here in South Bend. The Irish on top. Well, we talked with head coach Lou Holtz at practice the other day about Timmy Brown, and Lou Holtz didn't miss any words. He thought that Tim should have won the Heisman last year. He said if it, was, if it went to the best football player in America, then Tim Brown was that guy. What amazes me is there doesn't seem to be any plan by Michigan State on the special teams to kick away from him. Montgomery's just booming the thing. He had at least a 20-yard cushion when he caught that ball. And the guy is just simply too dangerous to turn loose in the open field. George Perlis on the sideline must be in shock right now. His partners come into South Bend. They played well against the Trojans of USC. An impressive win. Here's Brattle kicking it to Craig Johnson. And instead, it's one of the up backs at the 15-yard line. Mike Sargent, the tight end. Hammered backwards at the 25. Tim Brown, number 81, with two touchdown runs here tonight. The last Notre Dame player to run for two in one game, Vince McNally against Beloit back in 1926. <laughs> Tim Brown has tied that record here tonight. He also broke the record for most pages in the press guide. Tim Brown has seven pages devoted to him in the Notre Dame press guide, and that's the most by any player in history. McNally, by the way, was general manager of the Philadelphia Eagles for a while. General manager George Young of the New York Giants upstairs watching Tim Brown, McAllister, and the Spartans. There goes Lorenzo White. Reverses his field. Batters his way across the 35, up near the 37, in the grasp of Pat Eilers. That's the end of the first quarter. It's been all Notre Dame. The Irish big against the Spartans lead 19-0 after one. Ladies and gentlemen, the door. I'm Kylie, I'm Jim Kelly, and welcome back to South Bend. 19-0, a big deficit for the Spartans, a veteran team. They won't panic. They're just two plays from getting back into it. The difference, two punt returns for touchdowns by Tim Brown. Lorenzo White dances up across the 40. Brings up third and short. Mike Griffin back in. Storyline, South Bend, Tim Brown, two punt returns, one for 70, the other for 66 yards, 183 all-purpose yards. Lorenzo White and the Spartans, Kevin, playing catch-up. Well, they're in a tough spot now, and the special teams give you two touchdowns in the first quarter. The uh, defense for, for uh, Michigan State has not done poorly. They just haven't been on the field. Two touchdowns and a safety. <laughs> safety was a gift. McAllister on the sprint out. Unloads, safety valve, lost his concentration. Joe Pugh, the intended receiver. And I think McAllister has been, frankly, bothered by the deficit, but also by the pass rush put on by Notre Dame. He's been hurried, and we talked about that at the head of the show. They needed to pull him up. He's not gotten outside. Willie Boyer was wide open down the seam. McAllister never did look out there. Third and seven. Long night for McAllister. Those stats don't heat up. 14-22 left to go before halftime. Scores and highlights with Tim Brando coming up. Desevich, number 86, the junior out of Getzville, New York. Checks in at the tight end. Number 86, a junior, 6'4", 236. Blitz, McAllister won't get it underway. Now, interesting, he wanted the home run ball. He could have dumped the ball off and unloaded it, but you saw him cock his arm and try to unwind, and that took too much time. Pat Eilers came in for the sack. Jim, he sets up too deep, and he takes too long. This is a 10-yard drop by the time he sets up from the side. That was Eilers, but see, you have to step up. He's too slow. It takes him too long to get back 10 yards. He needs to be about 7 yards to get protection. Greg Montgomery, the last two times he's punted the ball, he's whiffed at trying to tackle Tim Brown. 
Here he goes again. Tripped up at the 43. He gets through there. He's gone again. A 37-yard punt, an 11-yard return. Well, really, the defense, you, you look at George. Georgia defensive coach, the defense has not played poorly for Michigan State. I said it earlier. The problem has been Brown. They put the ball in his hands. We said Andrzak would have to get him the ball. It turned out to be Montgomery that was getting him the ball. Two long touchdowns. The problem's been specialty teams. Yes. They've allowed 16 points, 16 of the 19. Andrzak bends in. Flair pass to Green. It's a block, and Mark Green keeps the knees turning. Close to a first down for the Irish. Todd Crum hanging on. Very impressed with Notre Dame. This is not a team of superstars, with, with the exception, of course, of Brown, who's been pretty super. They're so well coached. And uh, they've only had two days to prepare. They're in exams. They've only had two games to prepare for this game. 5-0 and oh under Lou Holtz when leading after the first quarter, and they are leading. 19 to nothing. And Lou goes over and gets the pep band fired up. They keep the intensity on. First and ten for the Notre Dame Irish on a dive play. Anthony Johnson, Anthony number Johnson. 22, out of South Bend. Mark Nichols on the stop defensively. Holtz has told Andrzak, the quarterback, that he just wants him to keep it simple. He doesn't want him to make mistakes. Don't turn the ball over. We can do the rest. And I think, judging from the talent he has on the special teams and the solid defense, that's a pretty good idea. Andrew Zach, if he doesn't turn the ball over, will be in good shape for the re remainder of this game. Dumas wide to the left along with Alonzo Jefferson, second and seven from the 43 of Michigan State. Andrew Zach barrels his way up close to the 40 in the grasp of Mark Nichols once again, number 83. Eight of three. Tackle Florida State Marshall. in the second by two touchdowns. Syracuse still leading Miami of Ohio by seven. That's in the second down. Third and four. Duke and Vanderbilt having a good game. Army hanging on against Kansas State. Scores and highlights with Tim Brando coming up at halftime. Brown, Dumas, wide to the left of your screen. You went from the left cornerback spot to the Spartans. Anderson. Only needed four. He's got Tim Brown, and Tim Brown's got a first down near the 26-yard line. Harlan Barnett back there on the coverage, the young sophomore out of Cincinnati. This is a double coverage, but it's man under coverage, and you have to chase him when he comes across. See this? Got a defender trying to chase him. He's just too fast to chase man to man. It's a great pattern for Notre Dame running him underneath because it creates a one-on-one -on -one situation, and you just can't keep up with the kid. He's too fast. Slot to the left, Jefferson and Dumas. Anthony Johnson, local product out of John Adams High School right here in South Bend. Joe Bergen, number 45, 6'2", 255, the defensive left end, came up and made the hit. Anthony Johnson, by the way, captain his high school soccer team. What an athlete. Four letters in soccer. Second oldest of nine children. Taking business administration. Second down and six. He gets a rest. Mark Green and Tony Brooks. Brooks, the freshman out of Tulsa, checks in. Brooks on a dive, blocking up front by the veteran center out of Germantown, Tennessee, Chuck Lanza. Travis Davis on the stop for the Spartans. Easier to play defense down here, Notre Dame. You have to go to crossing patterns uh, when you pass closer to the goal line. You have to run the ball. Notre Dame, very tough going in there, running against Michigan State. Big down here, third and about four. Dumas checks in with the play. Of course, Lou Holtz is his own offensive coordinator. He calls all the plays. Dumas wide to the left. Tony Brooks, the freshman, stays in, number 20. Mark Green. Jefferson. It's Jefferson. Great speed accelerates. Knife down at the 17. Percy Snow went down low. Wishbone may be the easiest formation on earth to read. You know where everybody's going. Here's Snow, the middle linebacker, number 48. Does a good job of getting off the block. 
coming up and getting Jefferson right around the ankle just shy of a first down good job by the middle linebacker you know where they're going the problem is there's three or four of them leading there he is out of Canton McKinley High School Ohio's defensive player of the year throttle a 34 yard field goal try out of the hold of Andrusak on its way no good 9.30 left to go. The only break that Michigan State has gotten here in the first half. It's been all Notre Dame. They lead 19-0. Punt returns for 70 and 66 yards. The last time that anyone returned a punt for a touchdown against Michigan State, way back in 1976, Jeff Logan of the Ohio State Buckeyes. First and 10 for the Spartans at their own 20-yard line. McAllister stays in at quarterback. Lorenzo White, six carries, 18 yards. White behind a wall of blockers on the right side. Mandarich, Kula, Tata, and Ned Volkar, 47, the inside linebacker, the junior out of Phillipsburg, New Jersey, on the stop. New nose tackle in as well for Notre Dame, Rich Morrison, number 86, the junior out of Lynchburg, Virginia. They lost Mike Griffin. Now, Griffin has, has been a tough kid, number 94. You saw him down on the field earlier. He had back surgery recently. He's come back. He's wanted to play, but I tell you, the kid's been banged up his whole career. Stayed around. He's a fifth-year senior. Now he's out of this game. As you see, Rob West going off. He's made a couple of big plays for Notre Dame. West limping all did not uh, play at all as a rookie. Had a very good spring, according to the coaches. Definite contributor at outside linebacker. His dad played at Grambling with the great legend down at Grambling, Eddie Robbins. Second down and seven, the ball at the 23 of the Spartans. Andre Rison comes wide to the left. Lorenzo White, big hole, left side, but he's tripped up at the 27-yard line. Kula, the left guard, and Shermer, the center, opened up a good hole. Tom Gorman grabbed Lorenzo White down around the ankles. Tom Gorman, number 87, is a former tight end. Left center of your screen, plays off the block, steps inside, exactly what you're supposed to do, especially against the eye, and tackles Lorenzo by his socks. Lorenzo's going to have to get some shorter socks if he's going to run for the yardage of this game. Good play by Gorman. Step inside always. Gorman, a putter, a kicker, a guard at Brother Weiss High School in Chicago. Third and two, and White will get the first down and more. Russell down inside. No, they say his knee went down at the 49 and a half yard line. Well, what you want to do with a great uh, tailback like this is spread out the defense and let him find the seam. The eye formation is great for this. Watch Lorenzo just picking up that seam, and now boom, just a lit right there is the only thing that tripped up Lorenzo. A little bit of Tim Brown in that guy. First and ten for the Spartans. Motion by Boyer. White barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Lots of action going on in college football. Let's check in with Tim Brando. At 11, Tim at the 48-yard line. White lost the yard. Here comes the reverse. They've got it set up. That's Wilson. And Wilson picks up two tough yards. Good defensive play by number 34 for the Michigan State Spartans. Lorenzo White threw a good block to help Wilson out. Gordon, the inside linebacker. I think they could have set that up a little better, Jim. I think if they had run McAllister wide, which they haven't been doing here early, they may have had a lot of a lot better luck there. Notre Dame wasn't going for it. Morrison on the tackle. Third and seven passing situation, and McAllister, he's been ineffective. Home run ball, looks for Boyer, fires it in the end zone. Boyer wants pass interference at the goal line. No call. A punting situation for the Spartans. The drive stalls as they approach midfield. What do you think? I didn't think so from here, but... Held that left arm. Yeah, it looks like right and left arms got tangled up. That ball way overthrown. Maybe it wasn't a catchable ball. Especially not if you've got your left arm held. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Montgomery back at his own 38. There is Tim Brown. Punt returns of 70 and 66 yards. Four touchdowns. 
Montgomery, a wobbling, high, high kick. Brown will field in a crowd at the 21. 6.35 left to go, and a penalty flag down, perhaps a late hit. So a flag to be checked out. Tim Brown trots off. Irish comfortably in command, 19 to nothing. A 27-yard kick by Montgomery. I'm guessing, but I think they didn't give him enough room. A fair catch interference. No contact on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Spartans not helping themselves. Another costly mistake. They trail by 19 with six and a half left before halftime. Kelly, I'm Jim Kelly. Welcome back to South Bend. George Perlis in his fifth year, 53 years of age. Before taking over at Michigan State, the Spartans had only won 15 games of their last 44. Turned the program around very quickly. First and ten. Irish. It's been all over the game. Green and Brooks are in the backfield. Brown in motion. Hole on the right side for Mark Green, the junior. Travis Davis, the sophomore, number 75. On the tick, tackle. Notre Dame, of course, just wants to be conservative in their own territory. They can run their offense, give it to their most dependable back. Green is a guy that does not turn the ball over, so he's the guy you would expect to get it on first down inside their 30-yard line. The senior center, number 51, Chuck Lanza, brings the Irish out, second and seven. Andrew Zach on the fly. out of bounds at his own 39. Kurt Larson chased him out of bounds, but not before. It's another Notre Dame first down. This is a wishbone formation. He wanted to go to Pat Terrell. Watch him lock on with his eyes to Pat Terrell as he comes out. Terrell's covered. Good job by Michigan State against the wishbone formation. And now Andrzak. This is exactly what you have to worry about. Both Andrzak and McAllister have that great speed and can get outside. They did against Michigan State. That man, Terry Andrzak, had a bad practice on Tuesday. It confused Lou Holtz. The reason he was up all night Monday, didn't get any sleep, he was studying for an exam. It kept Holtz awake all Tuesday night worrying about his quarterback. On the dive, Mark Green. Holtz's philosophy has to look real good now. With Brown scoring two touchdowns, he's their big guy. Very conservative offensively. Doesn't want to turn the ball over. Play safe. With a 19-0 lead, they can do that. Dumas comes wide to the right. Aaron Robb, top of your screen. Out of the picture. Green and Brooks for your running backs. Andrew Zach gives to Green. Good move outside. Dances to the 45. Percy Snow, 48, John Miller, 44, on the stop. That's a great reaction by Snow. Green does not have great speed. He made a great cut right away and got outside, but Snow just ran him down. I, I think that uh, the Spartans, they have, they have to do stuff. They have to get a little crazy on defense and make something happen. They're, they're lulling themselves to sleep. They've got definite passing situation here. They've got to come after him. Snow with 4-7 speed, great lateral ability, great pursuit ability. Brother Patrick plays basketball at Owens Technical College. Third and four. Andrzak bends in. Brown slotted wide right. Incomplete. Dumas had it. Would have been a first down. The pass a little high. Todd Crum, big collision. Number 35, good hit. And a full blitz. And Andrzak did exactly what he was supposed to. He pulled up immediately through the quick pass just a little bit high. Vince Phelan has had a rather easy night. A 3.4 grade average for his career at Notre Dame out of Racine, Wisconsin. And Todd Crum, who made the defensive hit, started 23 consecutive games at cornerback. Back deep. High, high spiral. Crum signals for the fair, fair catch. It hits at the 10 and will blow down inside the five-yard line. A 53-yard punt. It's down at the two and a half. 419 to go before halftime. Let's take time out. 19 left to go. I'm Jim Kelly along with Kevin Kiley. Welcome back as we approach halftime on ESPN, the second half of our doubleheader. We've got another great doubleheader for you next week. And of course, it all starts with game day. Tim Brando scores and highlights coming up at our halftime intermission. It's be careful time for the Spartans. They're down by 19. McAllister has Lorenzo White in the backfield. Willie Boyer wide to the left. Lorenzo White 
dances back to the line of scrimmage and is motored backwards in the grasp of Mike Griffin. George Perlis, head coach for Michigan State, of course, played and coached under the legendary Duffy Doherty. Duffy, the head coach at Michigan State, 1954 through 72. In fact, he beat the Irish, Duffy did, in 10 games out of 18 meetings. He won eight straight, 55 through 63. And Duffy is very sick out in a California hospital. And George made a point of sending all Spartan fans and best wishes to Duffy Doherty. And, of course, we echo the sentiments as well. McAllister is going to get sacked in the end zone. The second safety of the first half, Jeff Koontz. Strange way to get to 21 points. Again, he goes too deep. Immediate penetration. Immediate penetration. And McAllister should have dove forward right there. He didn't. He tried to go back the other way, and he was uh, he was sacked for a safety by Kuntz. The first time they got him, he should have tried to dive forward and get back in the playing field. When he didn't, he set himself up for a safety. He's having a tough day, Bobby McAllister. Or even thrown the ball incomplete and taken the penalty. 3.37 left to go. You talk about a strange way. Somebody will tune in and see 21-0. They'll say three touchdowns. <laughs> it's been two touchdowns on punt returns by Tim Brown, two safeties, and a field goal. The safety, the first safety on the very first play. Well, the Notre Dame offense has produced three points. And they have 21 points, which, which gives you the special teams and the defense. And you're right, this is an odd game. 3.37 left to go before halftime. The Irish whopping the Spartans 21-0. Specialty teams, a downfall on the part of Michigan State. Montgomery, well, this is the second time he's had a free kick. The last one was only 27 yards. Back deep, of course, Tim Brown. Two punt returns, 70 and 66 yards. He'll field this one at the 20. Brown. Explodes across the 40 to the 42, a 22-yard kickoff return. Jerry Faust, in his second year at Akron, leads his Zips into the vet in Philadelphia to take on the Temple Owls. Join Bob Rathman and former Redskin offensive lineman George Stark. All the action this Thursday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time, right here on ESPN. And, of course, another big doubleheader next week. Kevin and I will be at Foxborough. Boston College playing host to Joe Paterno, the defending champs, the Nittany Lions. They won big today. First and ten from the 42-yard line. Irish lead by 21. Ricky Waters, the freshman, dances, stutter steps up near the 44. Percy Snow has got him there. You know, we're talking about Duffy Doherty. And when you talk about Michigan State and you talk about Notre Dame, everybody knows about that tie 10-10 back in 66, a legendary football game. And then you look at some of the assistants who have coached under Duffy Doherty, like this man, George Perlis, Bob Devaney, Dan Devine, Bill Yeoman, Denny Stoltz, John McVeigh, Jimmy Ray. A great tutor, a great football coach, a great man, Duffy Doherty. Get well soon. Andrasak screams it out, dropped. Ricky Waters, a freshman mistake. Joe Bergen in the vicinity. Good call, too. Good call. Field position dictated it. Notre Dame had this thing set up. Here comes the line. Watch the offensive line move to the right. And Waters, number 12, he slides right in there. The ball is there. Andrzejk does what he's supposed to, but Waters a little young, anxious to get going, drops the ball. Had the engine churning, didn't he? The motor was running. Third and seven. Tim Brown, Ward, slotted out to the left, Andrew Zach. Dives to the 48, that will be a Notre Dame first down. He got it on extra effort. Harlan Barnett hanging on around the ankles. Great effort by Andrew Zach. Looks like a halfback reverses his field. Watch the offensive lineman try to pick up the blocks right there, slow down the lineman and pop. Quarterback taking a hit like that, pretty tough kid. Top-rated quarterback in the state of Michigan back in 83. 95 of 153 attempts as a senior, 1,859 yards, only three interceptions. Three-year starter for St. Francis Cabrini High School. 
Dad, his dad, Jim, wanted him to be a basketball player. That's a first down. Dad wanted him to be a basketball player. The coach, Brandon Oliver, went to his mom. Had her sign the, sign the release when he was a sophomore. He was only 145 pounds. I guess everybody's glad he turned to football. <laughs> his dad, Donald, was a Notre Dame graduate back in 1958, an American Studies major and quarterback. Terry Andrzak, the senior out of Allen Park, Michigan. First and ten. The Irish at the 48 of Michigan State. Brown, Dumas, wide left. Green slithers to the 44-yard line of the Spartans. Harlan Barnett backed him up. Tim, Pr Tim Brown's two touchdown runs tonight for punt returns ties a single-game NCAA record. The last player to do that, Garcia Lane for Ohio State against the Boilermakers of Purdue, October 8, 83. He's got springs in his legs still. Dumas, wide right, top of your screen. That's Tim Brown. Andrzak put it right in the breadbasket for Tony Brooks, the freshman from Tulsa. Travis Davis, the sophomore out of Warren, Ohio, on the stop. Spartans defense, Kevin Kiley's been out there a long time. And they've played well. And Brooks, uh, who carried that ball from the fullback position for Notre Dame, is in because Braxton Banks is injured. He had a knee ligament injury last week, and Brooks was a tailback. He's now in at fullback, and that's probably where he'll remain until Banks gets back. Pat Terrell, number 15, Tim Brown, slotted out wide to the left. Mark Green, wide right. Green's got it. Knifes his way to the 34. Barnett on the coverage again. You really see Lou Holtz's philosophy run twice, hit that short hook to Green, who has been in the backfield. He's now out. Very safe pass. Andrzak, not a great arm, not a strong arm. And Green, not a great runner, but they pick up a first down. Very conservative, but very effective. Green, three catches, 31 yards. First and 10, the Irish at the 34 of Michigan State. Play action. Wide open in the end zone. Incomplete. It goes for Dumas. Derek Reed fell down at the 8. Andrzak running left, throwing right. Toughest pass you can have to throw against the flow, against the grain just missed or it would be a 28 nothing game at halftime. Lou Holtz told us at practice the other day he was not pleased with his passing game as they marched through Ann Arbor. Uh, he said he didn't have a complete passing game and that's the first time they've gone long in this game. Andrzak does not have a strong arm and does not go long off. Andrzak, 6 of 11, 85 yards, second and 10. Beat gets out of it and somehow finds Timmy Brown. Another Irish first down. It'll be spotted at the 17 yard line. Harlan Barnett put quite a hit on, but Tim Brown, you just can't cover him one on one. Well, the coverage is here. Now, the, the thing about this is the only one who could have caught this pass is Brown. This is a great pass. Barnett and Moore to the left of your screen. 42 coming up, but that pass is just perfect. Just a perfect pass, and this guy can jump. He's about three feet off the ground. First and 10 for the Irish at the 17 of Michigan State. The reverse to Brown. Not this time. He says enough already. I'll go out of bounds, and a penalty flag, a late hit. I'm going to call it on John Miller, the safety for Michigan State, and I believe that's a legitimate call. Brown clearly was not trying to advance the ball. Number 44 in the middle of your picture. They run a reverse to the short side of the field. This is a reverse into the boundary. Brown's caught. He knows it. And look, he stopped running. Miller goes down. They didn't call it. They picked up the flag. That did not please Lou Holtz. Second and 18 from the 25. Spartans defense would like to stiffen. Flare pass to Ricky Waters. Waters chopped out at the 20. Well, don't forget, we've got scores and highlights. Tim Brando. And he will talk with Florida quarterback Kerwin Bell. 
Now Florida beat Alabama today with a great running performance. They rushed, I believe, for about 300 yards in that game. I'm sure Kerwin's happy anyway, though. Big upset. Bill Curry feeling some heat at Alabama. Third and 14. The 21 at Michigan State. Anderson. Brown in the corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Derek Reed. Brown got banged around a little bit. Good hit. So we will see the field goal team once again. Two safeties, two punt returns, and perhaps two field goals to close out the scoring in half number one. Just 12 seconds left. Certainly well within the range of Ted Gretel. Two out of three. Last, uh, well, 12, yeah, last week. Spartans had 12 days to get ready. Notre Dame just two, if you include exams. 38 yarder on its way, and it is good. 24 0. It's been all Notre Dame. Eight seconds left before relief for Michigan State. The Irish with their home opener. 24 0 against Michigan State. Notre Dame marched into Ann Arbor, upset Bo Schembechler and the Michigan Wolverines. The Spartans opened up with an impressive win against USC, but it's been all Notre Dame. Ezor and Johnson are back deep. Spartans get it at the 45. Now you've got three seconds left as we check that last scoring drive by Notre Dame and that field goal. 38 yarder. Big night for Ted Gretel. Now, if you're Michigan State, would you have McAllister just line up and throw the ball in the end zone, try for six just before the half or a penalty? I really don't know why not. McAllister, they say he can throw the ball 70 yards. I don't know what could happen. Tim Brown's not playing in a defensive secondary, so chances are they wouldn't run it back 100 yards. I would. Back deep for Notre Dame, number 27, George Streeter. They nicknamed him Streets. He's playing center field. McAllister. To Lorenzo White. And the half will end. It's been all Notre Dame. Two punt returns by that man, Tim Brown, 70 and 66 yards. His mom didn't want him to play football. She thought he went to band practice. His dad signed the release. His mom has never seen him play on television. She only watches the replays. Notre Dame by 24 scores and highlights with our host, Tim Brando. All right, Jim, thank you for tonight. I had never seen Tim Brown play before, Jim, and I heard that he was not a great runner, but he was lightning fast. Well, he is a great runner, and he is lightning fast. Too fast for the special teams of Michigan State. He's been the main difference, obviously, in this game. Well, let's take a look at how the game began on a rather ominous note for the Spartans of Michigan State. Here it is, watch in the upper right-hand corner. The kick at about the one-and-a-half-yard line. Ezor will field it there. He backs into the end zone. He goes down on one knee. There's no Notre Dame player around him. It's a safety, 2 nothing in favor of the Irish. Here he goes, 70 yards, number 81, Tim Brown. And, of course, the thing to watch here is the blocking, which he did get some good blocking, but a lot of people get great blocking. This guy's a gazelle. He has tremendous speed, and he just walks in. Montgomery was out kicking the coverage, I believe. He's the best punter in the nation in terms of yardage. Now, he had about a 15-yard cushion, Brown did, when he caught this ball, Jim. But some bad tackling efforts by three or four of the Spartans there. Then Brown does it all on acceleration. And watch Montgomery. He'll whiff right here. Terrible effort. And Brown has punt return number two. Well, we talked about two Heisman hopefuls. How about Lorenzo White? He has not been much of a factor. Rushing 11 carries, only 46 yards, one catch for 14. And, of course, Tim Brown, four catches for 71. And those two punt returns, total offense, 216 yards. You know, Michigan State has only been across midfield once into Notre Dame territory. But you talk about the specialty teams. They've not played well. The defense of Michigan State has played very well. Defense has played well, and I think the defense is the key. They have to get crazy and give Michigan State some opportunities in the Notre Dame uh, territory. They have to get a turnover and get McAllister some confidence and some playing room so they can go in and get a touchdown. They need some points. Would you change quarterback? No, not yet. No. Okay. We'll come back. The second half kickoff. Coming up, the Irish of Notre Dame. There's Dan Devine, former head coach. Time out. In all-purpose yards for the Irish of Notre Dame. That's been the difference in this football game. 
clearly. You don't have to be a math genius to figure out that when a kid takes two punt returns in for touchdowns in the first quarter, you're going to have a problem. <laughs> Michigan State has a problem. There he is, back deep, number 81, Tim Brown, the Heisman hopeful. Punt returns of 70 and 66 yards. You look from the end zone of the Irish. The 72nd consecutive sellout here at South Bend. The 53rd renewal of this great rivalry between Michigan State and Notre Dame. The state needs to make something happen, and since something happened to them on the specialty teams, I'm sure it's been preached to them that they need to make something happen beginning right here. Let's watch from behind now as if you were Tim Brown. Look out! At the 37-yard line, Carlos Jenkins saved another touchdown. He averages 25 yards on kickoff returns, 18 yards on punt returns. Number 81, Tim Brown. Andrusak had a great first half. The senior out of Allen Park, Michigan. His only start against Pittsburgh last year. Until the 87 campaign. Brown to the right. Green and Johnson are the running backs. Dumas, top of your screen. Green keeps it on the ground, lines it forward up near the 41. Kurt Larson, the junior, out of Waukesha, Wisconsin, on the stop. Since the early part of the second quarter, Notre Dame has become very predictable offensively. I say four out of every first down plays, out of every five first down plays, have been handoffs to the tailback. Michigan State needs to get a little bit out of their defense and start running around back there and trying to make something happen, get some shots and pulling that ball loose. Green again, cuts it inside, dives down at the 42. Mark Nichols and John Miller on the stop. Uh, yes, Nichols, and there is George Perlis, who he calls Nichols his best defensive lineman. Again, he came to Michigan State as a 218-pound freshman, beefed up to about 265 now. Perlis, he needs to get his offense in gear. I disagree with you. I would still change quarterbacks, try to get something going. Third and five. Brown to the very top of your screen. Andrew Zach looking at Tim the whole way, and it's incomplete at the 47-yard line. Derek Reed back there on the coverage. Reed, of course, the transfer out of SMU. What a job by Raider and Freeman and Lanza on the corner for Notre Dame. They just stuffed the defense. Gave Andrzak all that time to throw. Watch the good coverage by number six. The coaches will tell you that they remind that he reminds them of Sean Gill of the Bears. Incomplete. Strip the ball loose. Reed has been a very pleasant surprise. Todd Crum anticipating this punt. Line drive. Backs Crum up at the 14. Down at the 25-yard line, a 44-yard kick and a 10-yard return. First and 10, Michigan State trailing by 24. Rod West on the tackle for the Irish of Notre Dame. McAllister stays in at quarterback. I don't really think it's McAllister's fault all the way. It was three for six in the first half. He did not throw long well. He did not set up well. But he needs to get outside. He needs to get outside. That's what he does best. They need to get him to the corner. Rison wide right. Boyer wide left. Backs Moore and Lorenzo White. Number 34, Lorenzo White. Belted backwards for a loss of two. Ress Pritchett, the senior out of Atlanta. Number 34 defensively for the Irish. Play developed too slow, too easy to read. The I formation, one of the easiest formations to read by a defense. It's a power formation. And they have to knock you out of the way to make it work because you know where they're coming. It's just too easy. The fullback, they follow the fullback, and those two backs are lined up, and you come and they come. They've got to have power. They've got to have some first down and some points. A good look at Willie Boyer. Blitz. Loose football. Notre Dame will recover. Cedric Figaro 
forced the fumble. George Perlis, it's been that kind of a night. It started with a safety. Notre Dame never looked back. There is Tommy Gorman. He fell on the loose football after Figaro. Watch 48. Well, you're going to see it here. It's been happening all night. McAllister never looks. He drops too deep. Nobody blocks Figaro. There's no secret to this. McAllister could not be expected to hold on to the ball, and you see just dark shirts swarm on it. Backside, no help at all. Nobody comes out. See, that's the tackle of the guard. Whoever's uncovered has to drop back and pick that guy up. He's not been picked up all night. Figaro. Hard. Recovered by Tom Gorman. As that Carl Lewis haircut. First and ten Irish at the 14-yard line of Michigan State. Green slithers and dances inside the ten, down at the nine. Picks up five, brings up second down and five. Andy Heck and Frank Jacobs as the double tight end alignment for the Irish. Effective Derek Reed on the stop along with Percy Snow. What a job by the Notre Dame defense and their defensive line. They have six sacks for 43 yards in this game. And frankly, I expected that from Michigan State. I thought their line would have those type of numbers. Wrestled down at the six. Percy Snow put a saddle on his backside and rode him down. Uh, Notre Dame running backs are not that fast. They can be run down. Watch Snow, number 48, right in the middle of your screen. He does everything a middle linebacker is supposed to do. He rides green right into the ground. Just a sophomore there predicting greatness for this kid. He calls the defensive signal already. Just as a sophomore, and it's complicated. Green now, 12 rushes, 33 yards. will be a first down for the Irish inside the five. Tim Moore, the first Spartan to arrive. Watch 42 and 48, Percy Snow. Snow again, his defense is getting in his way. Brown comes right to him. He keeps his leverage and waits for the running back to cut up, and he makes the play. This guy's a great quarter, a great uh, middle linebacker. You need one to run a 4-3, and he could do the job. 11.04, clock is stopped for the measurement. First down. Andrusak checking it out. First down for the Irish, a 24-point lead. Well, if they get the touchdown, it's 31 to nothing. Would you replace McAllister and give your freshman quarterback some experience? That's the decision facing that man, George Perlis. Well, I don't know that McAllister has all that much experience. And I think it, I really don't believe it's all his fault. He's not getting the blocking, and they need to run their offense. They have not run their offense all night. Triple stack in the backfield. Jefferson is three, Brown 81, Green 24. Johnson. Out of John Adams High School, right here in South Bend, Anthony Johnson, just a sophomore. This kid went airborne from the five-yard line against Michigan. He's a power runner. He was a tailback. He knows how to find the holes. Not quick, but he knows where the goal line is. Rattle has been perfect throughout the night. It's a 31-point lead for the Irish. 10.40 to go, still in the third quarter. John Top over Michigan State. Johnson, Ezor is rattled, bangs it, but not deep. Ezor at the 11. Knife down at the 23. And that's where the Spartans were start, and McAllister stays in at quarterback. First and 10, and they're trailing 31-0. Lou Holtz wasn't pleased with his passing game. You lead this big, and the way your defense and specialty teams play with Tim Brown, you don't have to put it up. Looking for his first win against the Spartans. What's interesting about Holtz is I think he came into the season knowing what his weaknesses were. A little hitch delay that did not fool Jeff Koontz, number 93. Billy Wernell into the record book. 31 to nothing is our score here. 
1962, the Irish beat Michigan State 31 to 7. So this could be one of the worst setbacks that the Spartans might suffer at the hands of Notre Dame. Been a good call on first down. It was a draw play, but again, pretty easy to read. You just wait for that tailback, see if he clears the tailback before he hands it off, and he can come up and make the stop. Boyer wide left. Rison, top of your screen. Misses everybody. Boyer was open at the 40. A little hitch pattern. Now, I'll go back and check the stats on McAllister. Three out of seven, 42 yards. And again, when I'm suggesting changing quarterbacks, I'm not implying that it's Bobby McAllister's fault. But sometimes when you bring in a fresh quarterback, a change of cadence, a little excitement, some rhythm, and you get a little something going. I think what they need to do is block. And what Notre Dame has done so well is keep contained, make McAllister pull up. I said early in the game they had to get this kid outside. They have not getting, gotten him outside at all. You saw him contain him there, made him pull up and throw the ball away. McAllister, one of four for 14 yards passing since the first quarter. Blitz again. Daryl Gordon, number 38, the senior out of Hillside, New Jersey, 6'3", 210. His older brother, Vic, is a middleweight boxer. Well, Gordon almost delivered a knockout punch there. Well, they, they, get, they call the kid Flash, but to be absolutely honest with you, nobody is blocking this kid. And, and I don't see how McAllister could be faulted for getting hit in the back ten times in this game. There is nobody in the line dropping out and picking up the backside rush. Montgomery. Line drive kick. It won't turn over. Tim Brown. Zero return. Carlos Jenkins, a collision with Tim Brown. We take time out, 31 zip. Turns out to be a profit. <laughs> there he is, Tim Brown. Been a long night for that man. Lorenzo White just can't get untracked. Spartans set the tone early when they suffered a safety on the game's first play. Blocking on the right side by Jeff Pearson and Byron Spruell. Tony Brooks, the freshman out of Tulsa. Joe Bergen on the stop. Well, if I'm playing defense now, obviously, i got to have the ball. So you have to set the kid up. Who's ever carrying the ball, you set him up. You don't tackle him to the ground. You've got to try and hold these guys up and strip the ball away from Michigan State. Down 31 points. Needs the ball first and then some scores quick. They've only crossed midfield, the Spartans once. Pitches it back to Ricky Waters. Ricky Waters. Percy Snow on the stop. Let's check in again with Tim Brando. All right, Jim Kelly, thank you very much. Florida State at home having some difficulty. Where, Tim, we've got just about six minutes to go in the third quarter. The ball near midfield, third and eight for the Irish. They have a commanding 31 to nothing lead. Slot to the right, Brown inside. Reggie Ward is outside. Andrusak wants it all. Looks incomplete. Brown double teamed at the 30. Wanted the flag. Won't get it. Harlan Barnett, who they say the sophomore is their best cover man, back there on defense. He generally comes in as the nickelback. But in talking with the coaches last night at the Spartan Hotel, they really think that he can be a starter very soon. Well, I hope so, because they had a man-to-man -man on Brown on that play, and he did a pretty good job. Forced him out of his route. In Wisconsin, Rex Taylor. There is Todd Crum back deep. There's a line drive kick. Crum catches at the 12. Nobody's there to block. Crum fights for two tough yards up to the 15. A 38-yard kick, a three-yard return, and a flag to be checked out back at midfield. You can see the frustration there as Crum just pounded the natural grass here at South Bend, saying, where are the blockers? Procedure against the Irish. State had a block on, and they came very close to blocking that punt. They had a 10-man block on. That's why there were no blockers back there. Crum should have known that. I'm sure he did. There is George Perlis, and there is head coach Lou Holtz. Lou Holtz said that Woody Hayes was the biggest influence on his coaching career. Said Woody taught him that the job is not to keep players happy, but the job is to encourage your players to excel in academics as well as in athletics. 
Now, Lou is upset because you, you just had a shot of Lou Holtz and you think 31 to nothing that he should be happy and I'm sure he is but he's upset because he knows this team cannot afford mistakes down the road if they are to excel and he's trying to get it in their mind that even though this punt may not be pivotal in this game it could be in another. Phelan this time bangs a beauty it's high a spiral it backs from up. Fights furiously across the 20, so seven yards after that penalty. A 43-yard kick, a nine-yard return. First and 10, Michigan State at their own 27. At 4 o'clock Eastern time next with Cook and Kerry Ross. See Bino in his chef's hat today in the kitchen. Lorenzo White. A little slash off the right side. Blocking there by Vince Tata and Dave Houle. Ned Volkar, 47 on the stop defensively for Notre Dame. Lorenzo's not had a big night. What State needs to do is run their offense and make it work. This is a devastating loss for them, particularly since they have not been able to run their offense. So for the remainder of this game, we need to see their tailback run a little bit. That's the strength of their offense. And also we need to see something out of McAllister. He has to get outside and throw the ball a little better. Flags are down, and McAllister out of bounds at the 29-yard line. It's going to be a holding penalty on the offense, and that's how McAllister got outside. They held the Notre Dame defender on the corner. It was Figaro trying to keep contained. Oops. Well, they held him anyway because I saw him hold him, and I guess they had procedure before that. So it will back the Spartans up even further if the Irish accept the penalty. Bobby McAllister, tough night, chased out of the pocket, sacked, that ferocious Irish defense. The thing that surprised me most, I think, is that they were drop back passing. I thought because McAllister had those great feet that they would waggle and they'd go wide with McAllister, but they really tried to drop back pass in this game and it's backfired on them. The call was illegal procedure against Michigan State. It's been that kind of a night for that man in his fifth year at the helm of the Spartans. So it's second down and 12 spotted at the 19 yard line of Michigan State. Lorenzo White big hole right side he explodes to the 30 yard line. Well you saw Lorenzo White on that previous graphic had 47 yards tonight. That means that he surpasses Alan Amici of Wisconsin on the NCAA all time yardage list. Of course Alan won the Heisman. Next ahead Mike Garrett of Southern Cal who also won. There's Gordon on the contain again sprint out draw. He's able to keep it inside but that's the way the play is designed anyway. See how he, he slows down and then he's looking for the cutback on the sprint out draw does a nice job. Lorenzo White number 34. 15 carries, 56 yards tonight. One more, he'll pass Mike Garrett, another Heisman Trophy winner. Loose football, covered at the 23-yard line. Cedric Figaro wrapping up Lorenzo White. He's broken two, one for 70 and another for 66 yards. Montgomery, a leading putter in the nation off the right side of his foot, still hangs it high. It's a beauty and it backs Brown up to the 19. Penalty flag is down at the 15. Here comes another flag. A 55 yard punt. Brown loses six but there's a flag to be checked out. I'll give it another shot. I think that was a clip and I thought Montgomery did a good thing there. He punted it away from Brown. He made him turn his back to the coverage and go chase it. Look like Eilers of the Irish guilty of the clip. 508 left to go in the third quarter. Notre Dame led 2 nothing on a safety on the game's first play. And since then it's been all Notre Dame.
ball game. 31 to nothing. 72nd consecutive sellout here at South Bend. We talk about the great spirit, the great tradition, the history here. Showed at the opening. Newt Rockney, Frank Leahy, Eric Parsegian. The legends, the echoes when you come to Notre Dame. Andrasak, spread out. Up close to the 18-yard line. George Perlis, head coach at Michigan State, and a good friend of his, Raleigh Dotch, who is a coach, an assistant coach with the Minnesota Vikings. Very sick up in Minnesota. And George made a point yesterday when we chatted with him of sending along best wishes to Raleigh Dotch, of course, former head coach at Birmingham in the USFL at Rochester Methodist Hospital, Rochester, Minnesota, 201 West Center Street. Raleigh has an awful lot of friends in both college football and certainly the pro game. Just a great personality and a fun man to be around. Running back coach with Jerry Burns up in Minnesota. Harlan Barnett on the stop. Timmy Moore helped out number 42. Spartan defense, Kevin Colley, has played very well. They really have. It's people tune in and it's misleading uh, when you see this. Uh, it's a special team for Notre Dame, been unbelievable. They got that punt down on the two and a half yard line and that resulted in a safety earlier in the first half. And uh, if it was just offense against defense, we'd have a very close game, but the special teams have played a big part. Tim Brown all by himself wide to the left, and that's where Andrusak wants to go. The ball is up in the air. Knotted down at the 26-yard line. Almost intercepted. Mark Nichol stripped the ball loose. Andrasak looking at Tim Brown the whole way. This is what's been happening to McAllister the entire evening. The backside rush. Andrasak getting wide. He did a good job. They did a good job on the corner. But here comes the backside rush. He almost loses his arm. That was Nichols. Now I want you to watch Andy Heck play a little bit of defense. Well, later in that play, number 88 for Notre Dame. He's the one that kept it from being intercepted. The tight end knocked the ball away. Terry so far, 9 of 16, 105 yards, but 0 for 2 this half. You don't have to throw very much when you're ahead 24 nothing at half. Blitz is coming. Down at the 12. Todd Crum, the free safety. That was predictable and a little bit late. A six-yard loss. They're sending everybody third and long. You would expect this crumb number 35, middle of your screen. Andrzejczyk does exactly what he's expected to do. Don't turn it over. Lay down. We'll punt the ball. We're leaving 31 to nothing. Todd Crum is back deep, anticipating Vince Phelan's fifth punt. Todd Crum, by the way, drafted by the New York Mets in June of 86. Great kick by Phelan. Crum at the 40. Bryson with a block and down at the 48-yard line. A 48-yard kick, a 12-yard return, the first time the Spartans have crossed midfield this half. We'll take timeout. In South Bend tonight, the Irish big over the Spartans. Only the second time that Michigan State has been in Notre Dame territory all night. McAllister bends in. He's got Willie Boyer. Well, we showed you Dan Devine at halftime. There he is in the vest on the left-hand side of your screen. And if those faces look familiar, they're the 77 National Championship team of the Irish. How about some names? Joe Montana, of course, was the quarterback. The tight end was Ken McAfee. Ernie Hughes, the right guard. Steve McDaniels, the right tackle. Vegas Ferguson. Remember him, Kevin? Yeah, from the Patriots, right? Didn't he go to the Patriots, number one pick? Of course, Ross Browner, Jim Browner on that defensive unit for the 77 champs. First and ten for the Spartans. They go the other way. Rison popped out of bounds at the 20, at the 19. Todd Light, the freshman out of Flint, Michigan, back there. Todd Light is one of the guys they're expecting to step in and play quite a bit for Notre Dame. Of course, he's just a freshman. And freshmen don't usually play here at Notre Dame, but they're not allowed to be red-shirted either, so you have a lot of responsibility in the defensive secondary. Bode really likes him, said he has great range, wants to be a wide receiver. McAllister the other way. Wrestled down at the 13. George Streeter, number 27. 
the junior from Chicago. 44 tackles last year. His brother plays at Illinois in the Big Ten. Excellent range for streets. Well, last three plays, I think you've seen the Michigan State offense. They've got McAllister rolling out two completions and then running the ball. They seem to be having better luck at the corners. The reason, Notre Dame changing their defense up just a little bit. They're in a prevent-type defense now, and they just want to run the clock out with that big lead. Blake Ezor checks in, number 26 on offense for that man, Bobby McAllister. Ezor dances down to the 11, maybe the 10. In the grasp of George Streeter once again. Streeter, by the way, active in the National Honor Society in high school, ranked 20th academically in a class of 341. Good job by the Notre Dame defense. All day that defensive line has been piling it up, caving in the Michigan State line. They did it again there. There was five or six players involved in that tackle. They've done just a tremendous job at the corner. They've kept uh, McAllister for the most part contained throughout this game. Third and a short one. Lorenzo White, number 34, back in a tailback. McAllister will get the first down for the Spartans. Ned Bolkar on the stop defensively, number 47. They seem to be quicker. State is quicker. And they were very slow developing their plays early in the game. McAllister seems to be running a little bit quicker, and everything's happening with more speed. you got to have that. George Perlis would like to put seven on the board. Been a long night for his part. McAllister's gone the whole way at quarterback. Deepest penetration. Boyer and Rice and wide left. Lorenzo White upended at the five. Gang tackling by the Irish of Notre Dame right in front of the band. Cedric Figaro on the stop. The first to arrive. Got to have, excuse me, you've got to have teamwork on those inside backers. Now watch Volcar, number 47. He's going to cut down the people. Pritchard's following him right along. And he gets his hands on the tackle. Now Pritchard will get in the depth in the, uh, the tackle chart, but it'll be Volcar will make sure he points out that he did the dirty work on that play. Second and goal from the five. Willie Boyer in motion. Here comes McAllister. Will cut it against the grain and gets ripped down. Loose football. The Irish have it. defense is so happy you just love to shut teams out when you play defense especially great ones watch these guys they're all going to get in on this cutting it back the little guy and he loses the ball now quarterbacks you don't like them to run in traffic like that look at all the dark shirts it's been a team effort this blue collar defense for Notre Dame is going to have some name players shortly if they keep that up Ned Bolkar on that fumble recovery, president of the National Honor Society, vice president of the student council, the fumble forced by Gordon. First and ten for the Irish at the four. Hole opens up on the right side, rocking by Pearson and Spruell for Mark Green. A short dive. Let's check in more scores with Timmy. Well, we'll have Bruce Arians and his Temple Owls in action this Thursday night against Jerry Faust and his Zips of Akron. That's this Thursday, a doubleheader on Saturday, and right now we'll take time out. Kylie, back with you from South Bend. The Irish 31, the Spartans nothing. The last time, the only two times since George Perlis has been with Michigan State, he's been shut out by Michigan at 83 and 85. Second and five, Notre Dame. Green dances. Keeps the knees turning, hammers his way up near the 13-yard line. Third and short coming up. If I'm, if I'm Notre Dame right here, I'm going to keep it real simple. Speaking of simple, Tim Brown's two punt returns in the first quarter turned this game around. 216 all-purpose yards. The guy has been phenomenal. Look at the defense for Notre Dame. 28 rushing yards for Michigan State. Notre Dame seven sacks. It's been total domination. Lorenzo White, 17 carries for 52 yards. Close to first down yardage for the Irish. A trap delay around that left side. Blocking by 76, Tom Raider, and 65, Tom Freeman. Mark Green slithers for a first down. Boy, that Spartan defense has been on the field a long, long time. 
it's difficult to play under these conditions too because everybody not only the fans and you and I Jim everybody was pumped up for a close game here this thing is just an absolute blow The junior out of Idaho dances, spins, and turns for a first down, wrestled out by Todd Crum. What a block by Mark Green, number 24. Watch Green, right back on the wishbone, right of your screen. Look at that block. That's what knocks the contain down. Now we're off to the races. Miller missing the tackle, and finally Crum knocks him out. But it was Green on the end, leading in the wishbone, that made the block that got him outside. Tackling by the Spartans, Tony Brooks. Blocking over on that right side by Byron Spruell, number 73, the senior out of Aurora, Ohio. He's our student of the game for the Irish. He has already graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering. You see his grade average there. He was a three-time letterer at Aurora High School on the offensive and defensive tackle spot, captain of the basketball team, a National Honor Society member, earned his degree last May from the College of Engineering, a 3.75 average, currently taking graduate courses as part of his MBA program. Green to the 34. Kurt Larson, the junior, out of Waukesha, Wisconsin, on the stop. Student of the game is not just a student. He's a student of this game, too. 6'4", 279 pounds, number 73. Watch him come out. You don't want him loose in the secondary on snow. Slowed him down a little bit, but he needs to keep his feet under him there. If he'd have got up into Snow's chest, he might have driven him right on his back. That kid can play, and a great student, too. Third and three, Green. Not much doing. He runs right into Harlan Barnett. I'll tell you, Harlan Barnett has played a whale of a game. He's a hitter. He's been tremendous out there. So has Percy Snow, 11 tackles. Yeah, defense has played pretty well, but it seems ridiculous with the score, but they really have. This is a good defense, and this team will go away. Michigan State, I'm speaking of. See how smart the Notre Dame players are? Vince counting to make sure there are 10 men up there to block. That was my job on the special teams. Counter. Yeah. yeah. Blitz gets it away, and it's a great kick. A tremendous spiral. Hits at the 10. Crum chases it down at the 12, and there are six blue jerseys. The first, Tim Grunard, number 75, the sophomore from Chicago, who snaps on the specialty team. A 56-yard punt, a three-yard return. 12 minutes left to go in this football game. The Irish by 31. is being brought the 72nd consecutive sellout here at South Bend you can't steal a ticket motion by Jacobs McAllister unloads he's got Andre Ryson you know the last five games that the Irish have played they have faced nationally ranked teams doesn't get any easier, does it? No, and this will be three in a row, three wins in a row. They beat USC in the last game last year. And then they go to Purdue next week. Pittsburgh in trouble against Temple. Very strong Air Force, yet to be determined. And then USC and Navy. And then they come home. When they come home, they'll play USC, Navy, Boston College, and Alabama in Miami to finish the season. Lorenzo White like a bowling ball, hitting the 10 pin. George Streeter. He got the strike. Penetration has been a key for the Notre Dame defense all day, especially against that middle game. When you get penetration against the eye and backs it up, here's a good shot from the side. You'll see it. Look at the blue shirt. Streeter is a safety. He's in there. And everybody and who getting pushed back. They have penetrated very well in the middle. There's been no place to cut back and no place to make a cut. 16 times the last time they met, they blitzed the safety Notre Dame did against Michigan State. Third and nine. Bryson got it. Down at the 40. Todd Light, the freshman, spun around on the coverage. Great concentration by Bryson. 
And McAllister under pressure, rolling out, keeping his eye on Ryson. Watch number eight. Figaro does a good job on contained. They're about to get him. When he throws that thing, he gets bopped. And look at this pass. It's a perfect pass and a great catch, as you said, Jim, by Ryson. His momentum takes him down, and that's the way it's supposed to work, says George Pearl. Andre Ryson, he was supposed to be a threat in this game, but the game got out of hand early. Coaches will tell you that Ryson watched and listened to Mark Ingram, number one draft pick. Now he gets his chance. McAllister unloads in the end zone. Ryson had a step on Todd Light. Coaches say Ryson has great athletic ability in anything that he undertakes. Well, he played eight positions in one game in high school. The only positions he didn't play were the interior lines, and he punts and he plays kicks too. And then after last year's football season was over, he tried out for Judd Heathcote's basketball team, and he was the sixth man. <laughs> There's a penalty on that play. Jim's going to be a face mask on Notre Dame. Ten forty left to go as that penalty is stepped off against the Irish. McAllister on the whole way quarterback. Face mask by the defense. Fifteen-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Lou Holtz. I think he's a happy man with a thirty-one point lead. right side Dave Houle 74 Vince Tata 61 doing the blocking and Cedric Figaro 48 doing the tackling and what a job he has done on the corner and, and if I was to say the one thing that surprised me in this game aside of obviously Tim Brown back in the first quarter for touchdowns would be the contain on white and, and the fact that they really never let him get loose state wanted to go wide they couldn't go wide they tried to go up the middle they couldn't go up the middle they call Figaro an old beat-up jalopy, the kind of guy that's got black rim tires and a fender hanging on. But he gets the job done. Second and nine. Bryson out of bounds. Incomplete. The thing you have to do against a guy like McCall McAllister is you make him pull up. You need to show, you need to make them pull up and make a decision, and that'll help your defense. When they roll, they cut off their ability to throw back to the left. Now look at the contain. Look at all the shirts. He starts to get outside, and then he just throws the ball away. They keep this kid stopping and going. He never really had a chance to get loose and be free to throw the ball the entire game, maybe one or two times, and that's been a big plus for Notre Dame. They've learned their defense, and with two days to prepare, too, and Michigan State had 12 days. It's kind of odd, isn't it, that they would be that well prepared? Just the opposite. Maybe the layoff hurt the Spartans. Third and nine. Jacobs wide to the right, bottom of your screen on a fly pattern. McAllister instead looks for Rison, misfires. Behind Andre Rison down at the 10. Fourth and nine coming up. Todd Light on the coverage and a flag in the backfield of Michigan State. Roughing the passer. That brings Lou Holtz and the cap off to about the 30-yard line. All right, Will, too, and I'll tell you why. Lou Holtz is not happy with this. This is the third penalty in the last five or ten minutes. Number 48, Figro making the move. Ball's out. No need for that. And the official's going to call it, and rightfully so. That ball clearly thrown. And Lou Holtz is concerned because they do not have a powerful offense. I think they've shown that today. They've been... Uh, They've been competitive. They have an excellent offense. They do not have great players with the exception of Brown. And he knows when he gets down the road and has to win a game, they have to be mistake-free. And anything they do today in terms of penalties, certainly penalties like that, he's going to be upset and he's going to make it known in the meeting. The ball of the 12-yard line of the Irish. First and 10. Sargent in motion, the tight end. Lorenzo White. Penalty flag is down. This will be a clip against Michigan State. Lorenzo White is down at the 17. Todd Light went down low. Flag to be checked out. Holding against the Spartans. Could have called the clip or the hold. Interesting when you see Lou Holtz being so animated and so excited over the penalty calls and the emotion that we have seen for Notre Dame tonight because Lou Holtz said in practice the other day 
this is not an emotional team. He called them a blue-collar <laughs> club. The kind you bring your lunch pail and you get an honest day's work, but the coach is certainly a fire <laughs> Yeah, I think Luke could dunk. You think Luke could dunk? From the spot! It's from the spot! It's from the spot! What is holding on the offense? Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Still I think he got the point, he said from the spot. First and 20 from the spot. <laughs> First and 20. Rison wide left. Motion by Willie Jordan and Jacob. Notre Dame's defense has played very, very well. Greg Harris, the senior from Baton Rouge, a walk on. Backside of this defense has done such a great job all day. And, and the front side, uh, able to contain these guys, make them pull up. We talked about it early in the game. Now here's Figaro. Figaro doing exactly as he should, string it out, and you'll see Rod West, number 43, coming to you. That's his hat right there in the right corner. Better shot here. Figaro doing his. Watch the left. West comes in. Just too many blue shirts. They've been able to pull this guy up, and it's been real bad for Michigan State. McAllister on second and 22. Down at the 22 in the grasp of Ned Boltar. A terrific game for the inside linebacker number 47, 6'2, 235. The thing about defense is you have to learn to play together. When you don't have superstars, and as yet Notre Dame doesn't on defense, everybody has to do their assignment, especially when you have a team like this that is so explosive all over the field. And what a great game for the entire unit. The defensive backs, the linebackers in the line have all played magnificently for Notre Dame and shut down this offense, and it's a good offense. Third and 20 at the 22. Jacob, way at the bottom of your screen, top of the screen, Andre Rison. McAllister fires. Intercepted by the Irish. Ned Bolkar again. Bolkar bumped out of bounds at the 25, right in front of the Irish bench. yard return. Four letters as a linebacker and a fullback at Phillipsburg High School in Phillipsburg, New Jersey. Keeps a diary on the wide receivers. Coach has said he freelances. He's like a bull in a china shop. Well, he was a captain of the special teams last year. He is a freelancer, but he's standing right in front of Ryzen. He wanted to throw the Ryzen. McAllister did, and this is a happy moment for any linebacker. 7.44 left to go in the game. The Irish led 2-0 and never looked back. There. Eight rushers, 10 yards, 9 of 16, 105 yards passing, 115 total yards. New quarterback Tony Rice out of Woodford, South Carolina. A speedster. First down near midfield. Tony Rice, a six-footer. 197 pounds. Sat out the entire 86 campaign because of Proposition 48, a four-year starter in high school. He has thrown for more than 7,000 yards. But he's a runner. He's an option quarterback is what he is. And I think he just showed us, with an exclamation point, what he can do. A loss of two brings up second down and 12. Well, we told you about two Heisman hopefuls as the night began. A great night for one. And Lorenzo White and the Spartans, they've been playing catch up from the very first play. It's interesting that Brown's heroics effectively took White out of the game. He's not a great pass receiver, and uh, State had to go really to their, such as it was, their passing game in the second half. He took, out, took him out of the ground game. So Brown kind of affected White's performance. flag down as Tony Brooks goes down the French freshman out of Tulsa give you some names for Notre Dame from their 72 team Willie Townsend Dave Casper 
Dave Drew, Andy Huff, Tim Sullivan, Jim O'Malley, Mike Townsend. That 72 team, the last team to shut out Michigan State, 16 to nothing. The last Notre Dame shutout, 83, as they whitewashed Army, 42 to nothing. after the penalty against Notre Dame. Rice, quick beat. The bomb. Dropped at the 15. Pat Terrell, the sophomore out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Did Rice show you a good arm? Not only is he the option quarterback, I guess he can throw it too. Not real big, a six-footer. Doesn't look as heavy as 197 pounds. This is some pass right in there the uh, offense of the future of course would be Rice and Ricky Waters they expect great things from Waters too and both these guys they expect to play a big part in the Notre Dame offense in years to come Rob 21 Ward 83 slotted wide to the right Waters and Brooks are your backfield on third and 16 Rice up top safety bounds it out got Waters and the Spartans have Ricky at the 48 be about 11 yards, 10 yards shy of first down yardage. Brings up fourth and ten. Less than six minutes, but a good opening series for Tony Rice. Yes, it was, and uh, interestingly enough, the Notre Dame offense, with the exception of Brown, again, is not a big play offense, but it will be in the years to come because Waters and Rice are both big play guys. They just need experience, a little bit of age. goes into the end zone touchback from gets peppered at the goal line 526 left to go the Irish in total control Spartans with maybe one more chance when we come back let's go out to Jim Kelly and Kevin Kiley all right Tim we'll be going into the Tigers den on our CFA Saturday night football package once maybe twice this year see LSU again of course, we had them at College Station against Jackie Sherrill and the Aggies. 5.25 left to go. McAllister sprints out, fires on a rope, has Rice, and check it, it's Willie Boyer. Jeff Jacobs. Jacobs at the 38-yard line, spun around by the freshman, Todd Light. Well, we're playing for pride now. Notre Dame like to shut them out. Obviously, that looked awful good in the national rankings, a shutout of Michigan State. Of course, State needs to put something together so they can carry it into their game next week. Penalty flag is down. Picked off at the 12-yard line, Todd Light, the freshman. We talked about how high the coaches were. Great range. Wants to be a wide receiver, but if you play like that, they'll keep him in the secondary. And knows for the ball, the intangible. He breaks for the ball. He can anticipate so well. Flag to be checked out. It's against the Spartans. First down, Notre Dame. Watch McAllister. Perla said, what happened? Well, McAllister's taking a beating throughout this game. He, he gets it out there, even though he gets hit. Pass really never had a chance. And Light, he's going to wind up as a wide receiver if he makes a catch like this again. Look at this. He looks like he is the receiver. What an athletic family. His dad, William, played basketball at Morgan State. His brother, Trent, a swimmer at Arizona State. And his sister, Cheryl, a swimmer at Rochester. You'll hear a lot about Todd Light. 4.50 to go. The Irish by 31. the seventh Heisman Trophy to come out of Notre Dame. Some very impressive names. And that man, with this performance tonight on national television, certainly garnered some votes. Rice pulls it down. Spartans chop him down at the 15. Interesting, it's been such a big night for Tim Brown as he goes for the Heisman that the Heisman hopeful on the Spartan sideline has actually passed. There's Lorenzo White, 
with his 57 yards. He went by names like Ali Matson, Don McCauley, Wendell Tyler, Freeman McNeil, Rob Lytle, Alan Amici, Mike Garrett, two Heisman Trophy winners on the all-time rushing list. There's what he did tonight. He's a great player, and he'll do well through the rest of the year. Michigan State has a excellent team. Second and six. Rice pitches it back. Tony Brooks. Nothing doing inside of four when the next play is snapped. Florida State is next for George Perlis and crew. Then the Hawkeyes, the Wolverines, maybe a breather, and Mike White and the Illini. It's a pretty tough schedule here, Jim, as you look at it. Ohio State, and speaking, this is ranked 24th and most difficult in the country. And talking to Michigan State people, they feel they have a chance to win the Big Ten. Third and nine. They'll keep it on the ground. Trap blocking on the right side by Dean Brown, the sophomore out of Canton, number 71. Tony Brooks wants to be a doctor upon graduation. There is Lou Holtz. You know, we talked about Lou Holtz being most influenced by Woody Hayes and the fact that Woody taught Lou that the job was not to keep the athletes happy but to make them excel in academics as well as athletics. In the last 21 years at Notre Dame, the university's graduated 514 seniors. 508 have graduated out of 514 that they've had. Todd Crum, again, a busy man, dives to the 44-yard line. Pat Terrell, the sophomore from St. Pete, on the tackle, a flag to be checked out. 2.49 left to go. We'll take time up. Prison secondary tosses to Jasevich, the tight end. You heard the hit at midfield. John Foley out of Chicago, a sophomore. One of the very few athletes at Notre Dame to sit out because of Proposition 48. You ever notice how the Notre Dame helmet seems to shine a little bit? It's got gold powder in it. Gold powder, and they paint them every week. If for an away game, they paint them Thursday night. And Friday night, they paint them before the home games. Literally every week, whether they need it or not. And there is actual gold powder in there. That's why they shine so well. Those are mini golden domes. Yes. Loose football. Spartans recover, but that swarming defense of the Irish. Vince Tata, number 61, has gone all night at right guard out of Fenton, Michigan. Greg Harris, number 45, out of Baton Rouge, a walk-on, whose dad coached here at Notre Dame in 84 and 85, now at Minnesota, on the tackle. Now I asked Morris White, the offensive coordinator of uh, Michigan State last night, I asked him, it appeared you didn't have success in the drop back passing. You did better rolling out. And he said, no, we did all right in the drop back passing. I don't think he could say that after this game. One of the things that when you drop back as deep as these guys do is McAllister has the vision of the defense is a lot better. You see that guy a lot easier when he's deep. Third and 11. will score beat Francisco and with just 66 seconds left in the game the Spartans have ended the Irish's hopes for a shutout makes you wonder what would have happened had the Irish not put the pressure on there's no pressure Rice is just going on this and McAllister's pumping up as far as he can throw it he's wide open this thing's right on the money Francisco trailing in. He was beat all the way. And uh, give McAllister some credit. He threw that ball about 65 yards in the air. 31 to 6. 66 seconds left to go in this game. Looks like the Spartans will go for two. McAllister asking for the spot over in the hash mark. George Perlis, quite a man. Started that tremendous defensive front with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Elsie Greenwood, Mean Joe Green. Steelers, of course, when he was the defensive coordinator, went on to win four Super Bowls, named the team of the decade, 74, 75, 78, 79. There is Foge Fazio, former head coach at Pitt. 
Why was George happy when Bode decided to go? I want to see somebody get after them. Allow somebody to score after those guys bust their ass. That's a damn disgrace to Notre Dame. I want to get after their ass. Right now. Now I want to say I've ever seen eight guys on that. I'll give you an idea of the intensity. Give you an idea of the intensity of Lou Holtz and why he's been a winner just about every place he's been in turnaround program. You're going, Chicken Gun. Mm -hmm. Indy, special fox. He's got that. He's got on the left hand. If there's two guys on your side, you can get him to do. All right, let's go. Could you say that? You're a pretty rusher. You don't have to. Okay, you look good. Indy to the field. Indy to the field. Which side are you? Which side are you? You come in and we practice. Hey, 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 hey! Help him back in my corner and stay home. Hey, 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 Tell the backside corner to stay at home, so they're expecting obviously a little razzle-dazzle. Well, oh, yeah, it's a two-point conversion, but I think what you just saw there was the importance of every play. And the pride at Notre Dame. Yeah, pride. And you never let down as a coach. You don't want to ever give them the feeling that they can let down, so you have to maintain that intensity. Two great ones right there. They'll go for two. McAllister. Bryson wide to the right. Lorenzo White's the tailback. McAllister wide open. They'll get the two. Bernard Wilson, the junior from Patterson, New Jersey. A little bit of pride here, too. Going for two points and getting it. They've had a rough night. Boge and Lou over on the sideline just with their arms full. Let's watch that backside corner. He was supposed to stay at home. Well, yeah, Wilson. See what they did. They slipped Wilson out. It's like that tight end position. They had him lined up tight and they snuck him out. Always the tight end when you're going for that extra point, that two point extra point. Watch how far McAllister will throw this ball. Again, they say he can throw it 80 yards. Bobby uncorks it. Well, no defense in the world will help you if you throw it over the defense. Of course, that's what McAllister did there. 57 yards on the scoring strike. Boge Fazio, again the former head coach at Pitt. Defensive coordinator. A good guy, too. A real nice guy. 66 seconds left to go. Brown, Tim Brown, 275 all-purpose yards tonight. His career best, 286 a year ago against Navy. So all he needs now, Kevin Colley, is 11 yards, but he might not see the football. Brown is back deep, but you would expect, there's Tim checking out, make sure he's got 11. How about Lorenzo? He's watching from the sideline. He passed Alan Amici on the all-time yardage list tonight. Heisman Trophy winner. Here comes the onside kick attempt by Michigan State. So Tim Brown may not get a chance unless they put him back in. There is Tony Brooks, the freshman out of Tulsa. He covered the onside kick. Tim Brown is checking out, so he will not break his career best, 286 yards, against Navy last year. Interesting observation from one who played on onside's kick return teams. You don't have to wait for the ball to go 10 yards. If Brooks could have gone after that, that was a very good onside's kick. Brooks was waiting on the ball. You can step up there and catch it on a, on a big hop if you want and, uh, and just fall to the ground. You give that defense time to hit you and you might be in trouble. That was all you played on. Yeah, well, yeah. First. <laughs> Pitch back. Pete Graham. Quiet crowd. But pretty much still here, though. Pete Graham out of Rummison, New Jersey. Cousin, former Notre Dame defensive tackle Jeff Weston. Junior, 6'3", 210. How families go here? You get that feeling? Oh, grandfathers, yeah. fathers. Now we talked about the history and the tradition. 100 years of football at this great university. Steve Bells out of Phoenix is in a quarterback now, taking a snap. Under 20 seconds left to go, so that should be the final snap. Lou Holtz will saunter across the sideline and shake hands with George Perlis. Lou Holtz starting his second season at the helm of Notre Dame with two big wins. They march into Michigan. Now they've taken Michigan State. Lorenzo White and Tim Brown, the two Heisman hopefuls. It's been Tim Brown and the Irish tonight.
Well, I think George will go back. He's not going to see Tim Brown every week. And I think what George do, he'll go back, tell his defense they did a good job, needs a little work on the offense, do a little bit better job on the special team. But every week you will not see a player like Tim Brown who beat them almost single-handedly tonight. A happy man. He signs autographs. A lot of turf and a lot of Spartans left in the wake tonight. About 20 small sedans to player of the game, no question, Tim Brown. 275 all-purpose yards. He broke two punt returns for 70 and 66 yards and two scores. Our Hartford player of the game. Final score, once again, the Irish of Notre Dame over Michigan State, 31 to 8. Don't forget it, it starts again next Saturday. Like nobody. There's a big afternoon of college football coming your way. The Fighting Irish take on the Boston College Eagles. Paul Horning and Harry Callis will bring you all the action in just a moment. Today's Notre Dame versus Boston College football game. 